Boy, there is a major buzz in this stadium right now. And it sounds like Arrowhead in Frankfurt. Because we've never been here before, we have to build all of the things to be NFL ready. It takes hundreds of men and women. It takes thousands of hours of planning just to make this game happen so we can bring it home to the fans. Just unplug one, that's all you gotta do, and you take us right off the air. So please don't ever touch any of this. Tickets for this game sold out in 15 minutes. Welcome to Frankfurt Stadium for the first ever regular season NFL game in Frankfurt. I was a little bit nervous when I saw this mirror because I thought that means seven years bad luck and that's not really what we need. <laughs> My name is Jen McCandy. I'm an event operations manager with the NFL. But that probably is not going in until later in the week when these stairs are finished. I make everybody else's job easier when we go to stadiums that weren't built to support American football. I've been focused a lot on construction. We've had to like knock walls down and put new walls up and build equipment space. We're building camera platforms. We've got new showers being built and a new room for cold tubs. And a lot of it is just to accommodate how different a football team is to a soccer team. There's more people and the people are bigger. So we've done a ton of work in the locker rooms. The thing we were most excited about in the whole construction project was we knocked a brand new hole in the wall to get out onto the field. So now this is how the team will get outside. But none of this existed before. I think when we asked if we could knock a hole in the wall, nobody expected them to say yes. I think the hardest part of this job is just coordinating all of the moving pieces. If this is the managers, is this the group that's parking in P9 and coming in Tour 3? I have, I'm gonna estimate 15 different lists going right now. If I gave it to someone else, I don't think they'd have a clue what was going on, but it mostly keeps me on track. If you look at the big picture, we're probably 20% there, which is really right on track given where we're at on day two. Uh, and once all of the construction gets finished, that's when you really start to see the transformation because we can start fully branding everything and it really feels like an NFL game is coming here. We can get that from the other side. So, oh look, and they're starting to brand it too. Oh, that's exciting. So one of the things that was most important for us was making sure that teams have a place that feels like a locker room local to their home stadium. So what we did was we made sure that we infused as much team presence, um, logos, slogans. This is the team locker room, which I believe typically is kind of like a back of house storage area. Um, so we brought in 53 lockers. Um, we're going to continue doing some branding in here to, again to provide um, some more team presence. It's a bit of a very sterile environment, but we're doing the best we can. So now we're heading into the Dolphins area. These are all new walls that have just been put up. All this stuff was printed last night, <laughs> which was interesting because we had to wait and see how the construction turned out, which is always a fun, exciting challenge as you get on site. So this stadium is called the Waldstadion. Hope that German is okay. Which basically translates into the Forest Stadium. So when you come in from the main entrance, you actually have to walk through um, the woods to basically get here. And that's why the first time that we came here, we looked at these towers and said, how can we not brand them? I mean, it's just, it's such a natural canvas to be able to do that. Um, and then there are some existing structural elements in place at the front facade. Um, they have these massive banners just to provide that additional NFL branded element that makes it feel like we didn't kind of just come in, play a game and are leaving. Like we really took over the stadium and really made it feel like it's a natural NFL stadium. This has been a unique project. Obviously, uh, you know, one of the things we want to do is always ensure that we're bringing the best, the best quality playing surface we can, whatever country that may be. So for us, this started months ago with removing the old existing playing surface, their soccer pitch, and then sourcing a, a, a playing surface specifically for us. This specifically is a hybrid carpet product, so it's actually got a woven backing with synthetic fibers infilled with a sand and then seeded from there. It's rolled up at the farm after it's grown for 14 plus weeks, transported to the stadium and installed here, and we'll have a, a good playing surface for the, for the teams.
Uh, hi, everybody. <laughs> so, welcome to television. This is television. So the general nuts and bolts of a, a live sports production, in this case our, our NFL game here in Frankfurt, is all of our cameras and microphone sources are in the stadium. They all get transmitted via fiber connectivity. That all comes here into the truck. These are different camera numbers. So camera 9, camera 16 and 17, camera, camera 7. Once it hits the truck, we add graphics, we roll replays, uh, we add some audio mixing so that levels are good. Um, so all the composition of the show happens in this truck. This is where our producers, directors, our replay uh, team, our graphics, they all sit. This is David Grundvig, our lead audio mixer. Uh, he'll be providing all the sound that's coming into your living room. How many sources do we have here, David? How big is this show? It's big. <laughs> it's really big. There's probably 140 inputs, including all the commentary microphones, all the tape machines. Is yeah. that all wired this week? Uh, yesterday. Yeah. Oh, it's a pull. Nope. Oh, shoot. <laughs> that show is. Okay. Something that we need to flag for game day, that the door's got to be open. That's why we do this. <laughs> We've never been here before, and it's easy for us to take for granted that people know how to get around this stadium. Where's the other door? Here it is. There we go. Oh, it's the left door. <laughs> it's <boring. laughs> So the next two days are really about rehearsals for halftime show and all of our elements pregame. So it's a lot of running around, coordinating with people, Things change every single day. Things are being built, so we're definitely walking through it a little bit extra here to be prepared. I don't think that I am used to the space yet. What floor to get back to our office? Three. It feels like a little corn maze or something, and I'm never totally sure where I'm gonna end up. Wrong turn, <laughs> sorry about that. We really need to take the time to communicate with people about what to expect when they get here. No, that's like sweet. Set up staff tours. Nope, not it. Have maps available for them so that they can do their job and know how to get around. There we go, all right. Tim Tavito, I oversee uh, event presentation and content for the NFL. Fans here are pretty well educated and may understand the game. The one thing that they're not used to with a soccer game, you have continuous play. There's a lot of starts and stop with NFL football. And so our job is to make those breaks and those stops as entertaining and engaging as possible. So any entertainment you see in stadium, on the video boards, what goes on in the field, the halftime shows, I oversee all that fun stuff. There are a lot of unsung heroes and a lot of behind the scenes work. All the nitty gritty work that it takes to put on an event and put on all the entertainment, Alicia and Helen cover it all. In these stadiums, we really kind of lean into the traditions that these fans like, and they love to sing and they love to have a good time, and uh, and we'll try and rock the house. My name is Brian Davidson. I'm director of operations for Next Gen Stats. The pass here. Here's Hill. Escapes the tackle into the end zone. It goes. That's caught. Rasheed Rice and the rookie will set up a first down and goal. I'm in charge of our stadium installations. So most of our stadiums have between 20 and 24 sensors installed around the stadium. They're installed on the poles around. It's, I think, eight on, along the sidelines, three or four along the end zones. Since it's a brand new system, there's a lot of moving parts, making sure that all the sensors are pointed correctly on the field. Um, we're about to do a walk test to ensure that, one, we're actually tracking and they can pick up the tags as he's walking, plus to see the accuracy that when he's walking on the line, it is actually on the line. So these are the actual tags that get placed inside their shoulder pads. The players typically don't know that they're there. We place them well ahead of time uh, throughout the entire season. So they live within the shoulder pads. Because I don't have shoulder pads on, what we're gonna do is just use tape and tape these to my shoulders. And then we're gonna go out and walk in order to track our accuracy, as well as show the tracking of our system. So you're gonna see what we call trails almost uh, like you were to take a crayon and draw it. And areas of concern for us would be all of a sudden we see this like line pop way over to a side. That would tell us that 
we have some sort of interference, right? Which we might get because there's a bunch of metal out here on the field, but we're gonna stay to the middle. We should be okay. Cool, ready? Yeah. So here looking at the screen, you can see the tags and the trails of walking on the field as we're, as we're doing the testing. So this is looking exactly as, as we would expect for, for tracking quality. So it's six o'clock. We wanted to do a bus test this week with all of the drivers that we're going to have on game day. We are bringing in all 16 buses and the 16 drivers that are gonna be here on game day and doing a dress rehearsal of that movement. No, this is not bus one, this is bus seven. Everybody will unload here, and then once everybody's off, these two pull up and park right behind this one. We did a bus test back in August, so we do know that all 16 buses fit. Why is this different than it was in August? But um, I think that it might be a little bit chaotic at first. Right now it's not gonna fit. I feel a bit nervous about this pinch point. Do you think it's okay? But that's why we want to do it and we wanted to have the drivers that are gonna be here on Sunday as well so that when they turn up, they feel super confident about how they're getting in here, how they're turning around and then how they're getting out again. Yep. So in real life, yep. this bus comes in early, yep. it drops everybody yep. off, and then, and then this bus leaves? Forward. Fine, okay. So we've just done the home team arrival in the order they're going to come in, which went really well, and we're just gonna wait now and have the visiting team buses come and do the same thing. My name is Alex Steinforth, and I'm the general manager for Germany. Wir haben uns endlich gefunden. So we are right now in the biggest indoor sports hall in Germany. This is our community day, so we have a lot of uh, kids that um, are practicing flag football. Some of them are holding an American football in their hand for the first time in their life. Ihr könnt euch orientieren mit dem Ringfinger an der Naht. And this is part of our broader strategy in Germany that we definitely also want to uh, have a lasting impact. Yes, the games are the most visible aspect of what we're doing. But for us, it's really about growing the game overall. And um, part of that is also, you know, to bring kids to learn about American football, to play it, and maybe ideally end up in the, in the league uh, at some later stage. Frankfurt Stadium is our home today. The first game on this week nine Sunday. Everybody wake up. Get your coffee ready. Let's do this. I'm Alan Wright with the Kansas City Chiefs. I've been here 41 years, and my job title is Director of Equipment. We literally started back in August because we, we sent over uh, some, some stuff early on ocean freight. Everything we do is to try to replicate that we're at home. So we try to set everything up the same way for if we're here in Germany or if we're at home in Kansas City for a home game or if we're in LA playing the, the Chargers. So we give every player a bag that has these items and every one of them is detailed to each individual. Then we have a cold weather bag that has the same products for everybody involved. And then instead of them coming and see me about what they want to wear, I just put one of everything in their locker, give them the freedom of choice just for this trip. We put their number in German. We, we did that so it would have its own unique feature. Um, but really other than that, everything is primarily the same. Where's here? Oh, where's the German singer? I'm Erin Olmstead. I'm the president of E2K, and we partner with the NFL to produce all of the game and field pageantry. Okay, stand by to open! And go! Open! So right now we're in the middle of bringing in all of our military representatives, uh, doing our color guard rehearsals, anthem rehearsals. 
coming up right after this. We have the cheerleader rehearsal. Now we're doing player introductions, rolling it with the video, making sure our timings are right, formations are right. Uh, there's a lot of movement that needs to happen in a really short window, so we're lucky to have this like rehearsal time right now. We are actually ahead of schedule, so I'm feeling really good and calm, and I think we have five more hours until kickoff. Nine, Gabbert. Fifteen, Mahomes. So, see the tags are coming up as green. Uh, these dots, that means that uh, those players have been turned on. So we just did Patrick Mahomes, so he shows up there. The tags themselves live inside the shoulder pads, right inside here. And we tape them down just for extra securities. Uh, two tags help us to create player orientation, allow us to help track them. Versus a singular tag would only show location. This way here we can show direction as well with two tags. 87, Kelsey. So what we're gonna do now is activate the footballs. So we'll go ball by ball and call out the ball number and then ensure that it gets activated. All right, so first ball is 098. So this provides data to the NFL to track air yards, distance traveled. Floats one deep down the far sideline and is caught. So we just finished up in the Chiefs locker room. We're gonna head on over to the Dolphins, do the exact same thing you saw here. And then outside of getting K-balls and delivering referee tags, we are ready for kickoff here in Frankfurt. game day. Now it's just a little final detail work. So we've got a crew touching up sidelines, just making sure that that out of bounds line is crisp for the officials to be able to see. In the next two hours, we're expecting a lot of fans. I think it's going to be a real party. Um, we've got our DJs ready. We've got some performances from cheerleaders and some entertainment pieces going on, uh, which will be really exciting. So it's going to be great. Yeah! <laughs> so it's game day finally in Frankfurt. And what we've got behind us is we've got our NFL game day set that's here in Frankfurt. We also have our main studio in Los Angeles. So our LA hosts and our Frankfurt hosts will be talking to each other. I'm ready, I know the guys out in right. Germany, they've been ready. Let's get out right. there right now. Kimmy Checks is standing by with Steve Smith Sr. Guten Morgen, gang. Good morning, Good hello morning. to the States. We have an incredible kickoff here that's gonna start behind us in just a few hours. So you can see it's filling up pretty quickly. We've got tens of thousands of people outside tailgating. All of the fans are really excited. It's a, the, the kind of traditional tailgate that you would see at Super Bowl. Um, so giving fans the opportunity to experience the flavor of the NFL before the game starts through that football activations, F&B, entertainment, all those kind of pieces. We started in Munich last year and now two games starting today with one of the biggest matchups of the year right here in Frankfurt Stadium. I could be more pumped. Welcome inside Frankfurt Stadium in Frankfurt, Germany. What a game. And you can already feel the atmosphere ratcheting up for kickoff. All right, guys, 92% uh, of the fans are in the building. It's our show. Let's have a great one. Three, two, one. We're up. So we are roughly 25 minutes away from kickoff. The core of the show is about to start. The Chiefs came with their full entertainment team. They'll all have a pre-game performance. Two, one, Wolf, send them, go. It's time to make some history. Here's the keys to victory. Make them all remember me. They came as the energy. It's just great that the club is bringing those authentic traditions out here to Germany. So I think that'll be a really cool thing for the fans to see. How are we looking on the Chiefs? I think for me, player intros is the most exciting part of the game. Ladies and gentlemen, so I get to be down in the tunnel with the players, getting them ready. Please welcome the Miami Dolphins. Trying to hold them back so they don't run out early. That's the Dolphins. That was the Dolphins. The Dolphins. That was the Dolphins. Hold them. Do whatever you can to hold them. Hold, hold, hold. Hold, hold, hold. Five, four. Three, two, one. Send them. Go. Go. Here comes the Super Bowl champion, Kansas City Chiefs. Welcome to Frankfurt, Germany, where the National Football League International Series is about to put one of its best feet forward. Are you fired up, guys? Can yeah. you feel it? Let's go. Can you feel it? We can. Germany's so cold, man. Hey, these 
Look how little what they got going on, boy. Germany is crazy. All right, Danny, that's the last player. Let me know when you have everybody ready to go for coin toss. Coin toss, ready? Send them, start walking with coin toss. Coin toss, coin toss. Now I'll direct your attention to mid pitch for today's coin toss. Guten Tag, willkommen. Kansas City, Miami, welcome. It's an honor to be with you today. The reason that NFL games are as spectacular as they are, there's so many people involved. There's been so much work going into those games, not just from our German team, but from so many colleagues on the US side, on the UK side. The toss was won by the Dolphins. They elected to defer their choice to the second half. Three, Three sky, two, two, sky. one, cue the PA. To honor America and the host nation, Germany. During the anthem, it's kind of when everyone quiets down on comms. That's kind of the time when you sort of look around. Those are the moments where you really feel what we're doing. Seven, then down through to seven. We've done a tremendous job transforming the stadium. I mean, it feels like an authentic NFL stadium. I, I, I feel tremendously proud. I think we have a great team. Anthem, go! You just have these powerful renditions and people singing their national anthem, showing how much they love their country. They sang it. But in the end, we're all here for the same thing. We're here for the love of football and the entertainment of the game. Wow. Amazing. From the get-go to the end, offense, defense, special team. Hey guys, you guys absolutely killed pregame. We're getting closer and closer to kickoff. 20 seconds to kickoff, let's go! All right, let's play some football. They showed up so early, lined up to get in. I expect they're not going to want to leave after the game. It's just bringing that joy and excitement to fans who haven't had the chance to experience the NFL. How lucky am I to play a small part in it? Excellent job. You know you guys are killing it. Let's keep the momentum going. The first regular season game in Frankfurt, Germany. 